Today we're going to be replacing the pinion seal on a 2003 Mustang GT and it works on many other Ford vehicles. So this is what a pinion seal looks like. Very simple. It stops the differential fluid from leaking out. It doesn't really do much more than that. So we're going to be replacing this today. First thing you want to do is jack the car off the ground. If you can, use the rear differential to jack up the car. Um, jack it up so both rear wheels are slightly off the floor. I've got two big uh, jack stands on the rear axle, right here. And I've also got a little redundancy back there on the frame, two smaller jack stands. And a little more redundancy right here, just a jack uh, positioned right there. The last thing you want is a car falling on your head, especially one that's low profile, because that might hurt quite a lot. A little redundancy is never a bad thing. Once the car's safely on jacks, give it a tiny shake. Make sure it's secure. Now the car's jacked up, let's turn the key, put the car in neutral. That way if the car rolls away, it'll roll away now and you won't be underneath it. We're under the car, this is the rear, this is the differential. There's where the drive shaft connects. Up here, this is the refill plug. I recommend removing this as a very first step before you do anything else. The reason being, if you cannot remove this and you've drained the differential or lost any fluid, then it's going to be really hard to get the fluid back in and take it somewhere where you can get this plug to remove. One of the first things I'm recommending is taking this support off. There's two 15mm bolts, one here and one here. That will give you better access to the refill plug. If you don't remove the support, you can see there's a few things in the way of getting a good head-on connection to that refill plug. So I highly recommend you remove that, otherwise these can really strip uh, quite easily. So this is my differential refill plug. You can see I had an absolute nightmare getting it out. We drilled it, propaned it, uh, penetrating grease, welded it, or oh, it would not come out. We had to drill it out, get it out, get a new one. It's only a standard 3 8 inch, so uh, yeah, it did put my project back a bit, which you might notice some inconsistencies in the video with the jacks and things. That's because this is our second round. So it's very important this bit comes out first to see if you can proceed without getting too deep into the project. So when draining the fluid, um, when we change our pinion seal, um, most of the differential fluid will be drained during this. Um, it's actually easier to unbolt these 10 13mm bolts at the back and drain it that way, but you will need a gasket in order to reinstall this. Alternatively, you can drain out the um, seal portion between the drive shaft and the differential. It'll just take a little longer to drain. If you want to know how to drain from the rear here through these bolts and replace with a gasket, then uh, check our channel for another video on how to do this. You can see when we rotate, rotate the wheels while the car's in neutral, the drive shaft spins. We have the car in neutral because there's four bolts there that we need to get access to. We can rotate it to get all four of them out. Uh, Judging by what kind of differential you have, you'll notice your wheels will spin a certain direction. As I pull this one backwards, the other one also moves backwards, which gives you a good indication of what kind of differential you have. Okay, so we're underneath the car. This is the drive shaft. This is where the drive shaft connects to the differential. You see we've got quite a substantial leak here, which comes from where the drive shaft connects to the differential. In here we have a pinion seal. Um, I believe this is what is gone uh, in this car. What happens is, uh, you do need to find out why these uh, seals go bad. Usually they don't go bad by themselves, usually it's caused by excessive vibration. Uh, so in the drive shaft here we've got something called a U-joint, which is this kind of cross member here. Um, and it uh, has a cross shape which goes through here and down there. This is kind of rubber bushings in there and what happens these bushings can go it gives it a little bit too much play so what you can do is stick like a, um, a crowbar or a piece of metal and try and waggle the u-joint here I'll make a video on diagnosing u-joints soon but usually the vibrations here um, pass on through the pinion and this can vibrate and the pinion can then start um, 
causing a small leak, uh, which turns into a larger leak. And then before you know it, you have minimal fluid in your differential and you're ruining uh, bigger problems and giving yourself more expense. So we need to work out why the seal has gone bad. If there's no excessive play, maybe just replace the seal and see how you get on. So with all drive shafts, they're weighted uh, correctly uh, when they come out the factory. See this little guy here, that's a little weight. And you may have more, you may not. Um, so when the drive shaft spins, you go and say 70 miles an hour, it can't kind of, you know, buckle uh, when it spins too fast. So it's weighted in certain places to get a very even spin. Um, so when we take the drive shaft off, we have to remember its orientation. In uh, So when we take it off, it goes back exactly how it was before. So we do this by getting, say, like a white marker pen or something like that and drawing all the way along the shaft itself. So from here, <laughs> it's really hard to do with the camera, all the way along, all the way up here. So when we take this off, everything is going back exactly how it was before. So there's no, there's no trouble with the balancing or anything like that. So you can mark this in multiple places, but make sure you go all the way along. So before you lay your marks down on the differential, use a bit of brake clean if you've got a bad uh, leak here. That ensures you don't lose your marks later on. And it also saves your marker pen from getting all dirty and greasy and ruined. So I've done two lines going all the way down, all the way along. So uh, there's not going to be any problem with that. One thing to mention, we're going to be cleaning some of this stuff up later. Uh, some people do like a metal scribe or something like that, but just be wary that you don't clean off your own marks. Right, the next thing we're going to be undoing is four bolts. These are uh, 12 millimeter, 12 point bolts. So you'll need a 12 point socket. Put the car into neutral and just turn the drive shaft so two of the bolts are at the bottom. That way we can take two off at once. Once these bolts are at the bottom, put the car back in park. That will ensure the drive shaft doesn't rotate when we try and take these bolts out. To take the 12mm bolts out, just use a standard extension. That's because there's not much room here for a socket wrench in this gap here. Having the extension means we can undo it from over here and we can sort of lean away from all this that gets in the way of our socket wrench. If you're having trouble getting the leverage to get these out with the breaker bar, just put the car in neutral, attach the breaker bar to the bolt and rotate the back wheel. That'll ensure you get perfect leverage when using your breaker bar. Just like that. Alright, we're just undoing the last bolt now, so uh, the fourth of four. Um, when you take this bolt out past here, uh, a couple of things could happen. Number one, the drive shaft could drop. So what I've got is a jack stand, just uh, you know, almost pressing on the drive shaft so we can kind of raise it down slowly. Second thing that could happen is this um, drive shaft surface is uh, partially seized to the uh, flange here. In which case, what we're going to do is get the bolt, uh, thread it in a couple threads, and then just tap this area with a hammer. This area right here. That'll uh, uh, disrupt the mating surface and let it free loose but because we have a bolt in with a couple of threads right here the drive shaft's not just going to go whoosh whoosh straight on the floor or hit you in the head so a couple of things that could happen here so uh, mine just kind of fell out um, either way really it's not a big deal I let the jack down slowly and the drive shaft can actually just be pulled out and removed from the car Alternatively, you can put your jack down there and just kind of sort of push it out of the way. I'm going to take it out so I can inspect these U-joints while I'm here. So to remove the drive shaft, just grab it and pull towards you, towards the back of the car. And that will pull it from the kind of transmission housing and you can just roll it out of the way. So here's our drive shaft pulled from the car. The sender came out the transmission. You probably see a little bit of transmission fluid, but not really much will come out of there. Uh, what we can do is check these two U-joints. There's one near the transmission here, and one which we're somewhat acquainted with uh, right here, which connects to the differential. Just look at the rubber bushings and look for excessive play. 
So they're the two typical uh, failure signs of U-joints. As I said, I'll cover this in a separate video. What we're doing now is a little cleanup operation. We're gonna just clean this mating surface. So when we reinstall it back into the car, it's gonna be flush. So a bit of brake cleaner, um, maybe a wire brush, something like that, or fine grit sandpaper just to clean this mating surface. All right, always when cleaning now, be really mindful about the marks you put on these. The last thing you want to do is lose those. I've also um, taken a wire brush on some of these threads as well, just to clean them up, because we're going to re-Loctite these, and the last thing we want is old Loctite, new Loctite, and they're going to be you know, almost impossible to get out uh, next time. So just clean things up a bit, but be mindful about your markings. All right, now the drive shaft's gone. This is kind of what we see. I'm just going to wire brush this flange here so it's nice and smooth you don't have to worry about it afterwards then again be mindful of your markings you don't want to get rid of those when you get the brake cleaner and wire brush on here so clean the threads here and this whole mating surface we're going to clean it so a mating surface is flush against the drive shaft when we put on and also we're going to put more markings on this so we don't we want it to be kind of grease free when we put down these markings so now that's somewhat clean, or at least smooth, that's the main point here, uh, as I can get it. All we need to do is mark where this bolt is on this thread right here. We also need to count the number of threads exposed on this bolt. Now the reason being this bolt is torqued down to a certain setting, and there's bearings behind there. If we get this too tight, then um, it could crush the bearings or at least impact them a bit and cause them to fail. If it's too loose, this will be loose, causing vibration and damaging either the differential or giving a wobble on the drive shaft. So either one, not good. So I have five exposed threads on the bottom here. One, two, three, four, five. I've marked all the way down, all the way along, so I know where the bolt is on the threads. I know where the bolt is in relation to the flange. I know where the flange from before is um, related to the differential. So I know exactly how this is going to go back on. The reason I don't draw all the way down and up is because you could be 180 degrees out. I kind of just do two next to each other. That way if we lose one somehow, it might be quite hard. I have another one to fall back on. So the next thing we're going to do now it's all marked out is uh, take this nut off here. It's a 27 millimeter. If you don't have a 27 millimeter socket, Rent an axle nut kit from uh, Pet Boys for free. I've got one right there. So we're taking the kind of nut off there. It wasn't on too tight. Got a breaker bar on there, came right off easy. So now we've taken that nut off, we need to uh, pry off this uh, flange right here. Uh, you can use a six inch uh, gear puller, that'll take it right off. Or you can use a harmonic balancer pulley removal tool, which you can rent from free uh, from Pet Boys, along with your axle nut set, which is pretty cool. So we're going to pull this flange off now. It's going to get a little messy, so get some rags and a catch pan, because we may lose some fluid when this comes off. So here's the harmonic balancer pulley uh, removal kit. Um, if you have a 6 inch gear puller, just use that, it'll be a lot simple. Uh, this you can rent for free, you might not have a gear puller, so it's a good option uh, to use. However, you will need your own uh, nuts and uh, potentially washers as well. So the idea is, this is uh, what's called uh, a duck's foot. Uh, this uh, little middle bit goes over the uh, bolt that threads out there. And then our pulley, um, we attach it through each one of these kind of long uh, holes in there. So it goes on that way. Um, the middle bit, we drive through the middle. This is what we wrench down with our socket wrench on this end. And for these, we're going to use uh, thick ones that go through our holes, and we're just going to bolt them in the rear. So that's how we're kind of going to tweak this tool to uh, get this pulley off. We can't reuse the bolts that actually thread into the pulley because they're just not long enough to make the clearance past the nut. We'll see it in better detail when we get this on the car. You can see there's just enough clearance to get these bolts on. Uh, so this set will work quite well to take this flange off. And you can see there. So you can see it slowly coming up there. We've got a, a little bit of clearance. 
get your catch pan ready and sort of approach it from the side then uh, you shouldn't get a nice uh, gear oil shower. Okay, that's going to drain a bit of oil out. Probably quite a lot actually, so uh, make sure you do have a catch pan. Okay, so here's how it looks with it all off the uh, car. Just pulled that off there. Uh, one note, you will not get this off with a hammer and chisel, don't even try it. The amount of force it took to pull the uh, splines loose here, no way. Um, so inside this pinion flange here, um, there is a seal which mates with this uh, pinion seal we're about to get at shortly, uh, just down there. What you make, want to make sure you do is clean this down with, say, brake cleaner. Make sure there's no debris or crud in there. Uh, this seal inside here needs to mate with our pinion seal that we're about to put on. So clean all this out and just put a tiny light smear of gear oil on afterwards. We'll do that before we put it back on. Also make sure the splines are clear of uh, debris and anything like that. So giving this a good clean, refresh my paint markings so you can't really go wrong now. Clean the seal and the spline. Set this aside, uh, we're going to carry on. Now this is our seal. Uh, you may wonder why it's leaking despite there being a seal in there. It's because the pinion flange also has the seal on the back and together they form the mating surface. So uh, with the flange removed you will get a minor leak and when this one comes out you'll get a bit more of a leak. Now you may want to get your new um, seal and hold it up against the old one just to make sure the uh, diameter is the same um, be because we're going to be uh, slightly destroying this one to get it out. Now the old seal um, is so compacted in there but you see where the colour changes from kind of orange to the uh, differential housing here, the grey. We're just going to slip a screwdriver in there, in this line right here and damage this seal inwards and then we're going to try and pry it out either with uh, some pliers or anything you can. Try not to damage anything like the splines or the housing. The housing's made of tough stuff, so you'll do a hard job of damaging that. Continue to hammer in all the way around until it loses its seal. It may take an inch or two by just hitting upwards along this side, but you'll eventually get it off. So here's probably what your old one looks like when it's finally removed. Um, on my vehicle it was the minoriest of minor leaks so it's it's kind of hard to pinpoint. I've looked around the old one I can't see anything obvious. It might just be the case of this rubber drying out and you know the, a very small leak through there. If it's a big leak uh, yeah you might be looking at the drive shaft or um, uh, the flange or any anything like that is a kind of suspect of why this failed but in this case it, it really just looks like the rubber dried out and it gave a really minor leak you can kind of hear it when you move this the, the rubber um, just the dryness of it so yeah we're taking the old one out we're gonna clean the whole area and uh, start reinstalling so um, behind our pinion seal uh, this guy here it's called an oil slinger we can actually take this out to get access to the uh, pinion bearing right behind there. So now with the oil slinger removed we can see the bearings back here. These are called the pinion bearings. Um, inside here we can see there's a lot of old residue from the old pinion seal here. Which is just kind of almost frozen to the uh, housing here. So we need to get all this off here. We can use a wire brush, fine grit sandpaper, anything like that, but be careful not to abrase the splines here, the threads here, and also don't forget to lose your markings here, so be wary of that when you uh, clean all this down. I recommend using brake cleaner, it's, it's pretty good, it evaporates and it will get all this crud off here. Right, I've cleaned all the area, I've wired brushed uh, the old seal off, it feels really smooth all the way around which is the main thing. Again it will leak a tiny little bit unless you burn dry in there, um, that's okay because that's the job of the seal. Clean the splines, I've remembered my markings here so I'm going to redo those and um, I've been careful with the wire brush not to damage any of the threads and splines and bearings. So we're ready to put the oil slinger back in now. Uh, in goes the oil slinger. Now I'm going to put the pinion seal in. So press the seal on evenly just with your hands so it's nice and even all the way around. 
If you have a bit of PVC pipe or anything like that, the same circumference, just place, place it on top and hit the pipe. That way it goes in evenly. The last thing you want to do is tap in one side all the way and then the other side. It won't create an even seal. What you can do is lightly tap all the way around until it goes in firmly. If you don't have, say, a PVC pipe or anything to press this in evenly, that will work fine. Um, with these seals, um, you can put a bit of gear oil all the way around. I tend not to. I, I like to put them in um, dry just to create a better seal. It's, uh, again, it's, it's up to you. Alright, so the seal's in. It's actually not even leaking anymore. Um, I got a little bit of wood, tapped it in with a hammer. That way you're tapping in a larger surface area and you're not just damaging a tiny bit where the hammer hits. So that's a good uh, technique to get that in there. So it's really flush, it feels nice. I'm just going to clean this with brake cleaner because my uh, rubber mallet chipped away a little bit and then we'll continue. So we're going to press on our um, pinion flange now. I use a little nylon brush to get down all these splines just to make sure there's absolutely no debris in there before we push it back on. Now this is where we're going to start using our markings again. So this is uh, why they're very important. It's got to go on this same exact way it came off. Okay, so we're just pressing our uh, flange back on. Um, you can see the marks line up there and there. So we know we're in the right orientation. Next thing we're going to do is just take a hammer and keep tapping each side of this. As we tap it in, it'll slowly go in evenly. Make sure the splines are all sort of somewhat in by hand first, and then you can drive it in with a hammer. So once you have the flange on a little ways, uh, you can take your 27mm bolt and thread it so it's almost level with the end of the bolt here. That way if you accidentally hit this, you're not going to damage the threads or anything like that. Alright, so once the flange is uh, on there, we're going to put some uh, removable Loctite, which is the blue one here. This is a cheap Chinese version, <laughs> works great. Uh, and we're going to put it on the threads of uh, the bolt which this nut goes on. Okay, so just put a bit of blue Loctite on the threads here, and then put the 27mm uh, bolt back on. So we're pretty much on the money with our original marks. You can see there's the one on the uh, bolt there coming along the flange just there. And as a sanity check, double count in the threads, we got our five at the bottom, which is where we measured the five from at the bottom. So I'm satisfied that that's on correctly. Uh, we don't need to worry about torque or anything like that if you do it with the number of threads and the exact markings, you cannot go wrong. Now before we put the drive shaft back on, we want to make sure the area that goes into the transmission is just free of debris and anything like that. The same with the mating surface on the car. So the tricky part, well fiddly part, is getting the uh, drive shaft back in. So insert the drive shaft from the rear of the car and uh, there's a piece here that it should go over halfway down, which is, uh, it belongs to the exhaust system. Insert it over there and position it sort of near the socket for the transmission. Get a jack stand. If you've got a low profile car, just turn it on its side just to support some of the weight of the drive shaft while you put it in. Look at where your markings are on the drive shaft. You can see mine are at the bottom here and again at the bottom on here. So I know the drive shaft will roughly be in that position when it's installed on the car. So get it just roughly what you think is right and then we have a rough orientation. Just sort of loosely position the drive shaft over the transmission end. The good thing about U-joints is that this whole thing doesn't have to be perfectly straight for this end to go in, which is great. So we're just gonna push this onto here and see where we're at. So now I've slipped one end into the transmission. I've just rotated the jack stand to uh, support this side and we can just hire the jack stand to roughly get it lined up with our flange there. So I've popped the drive shaft into the transmission. Uh, you can see we're about, here's our line here. It should be meeting up with this one here. So we're a few splines out. We're gonna rotate it slightly this way in the transmission and try again. Okay, we are somewhat lined up. How do you know if you're a spline out on the transmission? Well, if you're a spline out, your uh, bolt holes won't line up. 
So we're pretty much there now. I've got a jack stand supporting it because my arms are tired after lining it up. Uh, we're just going to put those uh, four 12mm 12 point uh, bolts back in now. So uh, like the 27mm bolt you want to put some uh, removable Loctite on these threads. You can sort of see where it was on from the factory. So uh, yeah, put this on all four of the bolts. So I've put the bolts in finger tight. Um, tighten them in a crisscross pattern. So this one, the one up there, this one, then this one. This ensures the flange is bolted uh, evenly to the drive shaft and it presses down correctly. You put the car in neutral to access the other two bolts just like before if you need to. Okay, once you're pretty satisfied these bolts are in uh, really well, just mark where the bolt is in relation to the flange. And then uh, check back in a week even a day or two, depends how much driving you do. And uh, if they don't line up, your bolts aren't tight enough. Just a bit of a sanity check there. But with those bolts, when using Loctite, this will really help. And um, it'll be really doubtful that they will come loose while you're driving. Any gear oil that comes out, recycle it. I'm collecting quite a lot of fluids here. Take them all down in one go. So now it's time to refill the differential back up. You'll need your gear oil, probably about a gallon. Um, then you have a couple of options. You can use one of these kind of cheap pumps. You can use an expensive pump. It's really up to you. So with this one, you stick this in here. And start pumping, and then your fluid will come out. Pretty simple. Um, I got this, a camel back. This is uh, for running. So you could just fill this bladder with uh, the gear oil. And all you have to do is squeeze the bladder fluid comes out the end very easy or you can uh, mustard together something custom of your own so it's pretty easy it's just like a gravity fill we're not like pumping upwards or anything like that so I fill this little camel back up uh, poked it into the differential all you pretty much have to do is squeeze down just to show you can use anything to refill these pretty cool uh, how do you know when it's full well it will look exactly like that Oh, you could dip a finger in and just check that the liquid meets the level. So just clean up this area a little bit, I'm sure a little oozed out, and we'll put the refill plug back in. So before I put my refill plug back in, I'm going to put a bit of anti-seize on these threads. I really don't want to have to go through that effort of getting this out again, it was a total nightmare. So this you can get in a small packet, it's around a dollar uh, at the checkout at say Pet Boys AutoZone. We can get one of these big things for about eight dollars. They're pretty cool and they're good for non-critical components where you just want to get them off easily But next time. Just get that refill plug snug on there, you don't really need to crank it down at all. So now we want to put this little support back on, uh, from the back of the car. It goes this way here. This pit goes, goes up and over the differential, if you don't remember. So it sits like that. We're going to bolt that back in 15 millimeter. Now we're all refilled and everything. Check for leaks over the next week or two just to make sure everything's in there, not leaking out, and jobs are good. And thanks for watching.